Hello there and welcome to yet another episode of The Builder Story. I must say it is good to be back. There's, li- there's a little bit of change that's occurred. It starts with my name. My name is Akoma Kwabio Joseph. Uh, today we have a great and phenomenal woman in the house. She is a national treasure. She's a continental treasure. She is, she's everything. If you're a lover of makeup, uh, you this is a name that you would know. So we're talking about our guest for today, the CEO and founder of Nuban Beauty, Mrs. Stella Ndekile. And when we come back, I'll get to show you her face. Stay with us. My name is Tony Onigbanjo, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer at August Secrets. Keep watching The Builder's Story on Sabi Writers TV. And welcome back. Earlier before the show, I introduced our guest, CEO and founder of Nuban Beauty, Mrs. Stella Ndekile. Nuban Beauty is a brand that caters for African beauties, okay, according to all your shades of, of skin. This is a Nigerian based makeup brand that has international standards. So, before, without much ado, let's just introduce our guest today, Mrs. Stella Ndekile. Welcome to the show now. Thank you. I do hope I pronounced your name right. You did. You did. <laughs> I tried. Okay. You Welcome. Did. Welcome to the show. You are, you are beautiful. You're exactly how I see your pictures. Thank you. Thank you. So how much. how how was your day? How has been your day? So far, good. Uh, the rain is trying to spoil the day, but it is. <laughs> it is, and it's been really chilled. Yeah. So um, let's just you know progress further. Uh, I have. I don't want to use the word stalk, but I have followed your journey and it's been one that really shows life processes and life's journey, starting from being a medical laboratory scientist. Let's tell us about that a bit. Um, so I would, you know, like every smart child, you know, like if you're seen as a smart child of the mm, house, okay. you want to be a doctor, right? Yeah. So I said that I wanted to be a doctor. Yeah. Then life happened, admission happened, and I got stuck with med lab science. Oh. Yeah, which was close to medicine and surgery. Mm-hmm. And I am um, a kind of a process person. Yeah. I like things tinkering with my hands. So see myself having to do the med lab science, see kind of what the kind of things I like to do. Because, yeah. you know, med lab science has to do a lot with you working with your hands. Yeah, you, or mixing. You know. So I didn't, I saw myself there and I just got comfortable there. Oh. Yeah, and I graduated from medical laboratory science at Boeing State University. That was in okay. 2010. Yeah. Oh, great. So apart from, without you having the whole uh, medicine and surgery, you, you, you went in for something, you finally found something that you, you got comfortable with. Yeah. So after graduation, you're not a medical laboratory scientist. What what happened after that? After graduation, so as a med lab scientist, uh, when you're done with a, a school degree, does a, come out with a BMLS, you go for your internship. Okay. So I did my internship in a national orthopedic hospital in Bobi. Oh. After quidge, I did my youth service, and I did. Uh, I was posted to College of Medicine. University of Lagos, okay, the uh, anatomy department, which is also, so that's my specialty in school. So as a med oh. lab scientist, we come out with different specialties. Mine was uh, histopathology slash morbid anatomy. Uh, could you just break that for us? <laughs> <laughs> could you just break that for break that down for us? Okay, so, um, but we have about five specialties. The last time I checked. Okay. So we have hematology. We have chemistry. We have microbiology we have histopathology we are, so there are different specialties so when you come to the lab the people who are into like um, the stool the physics uh, okay. and all that okay they are the microbiology specialists okay then the hematologists are the people who are into more of the blood, the blood same, yeah the same with the chemistry yeah then we talk about my specialty which is histopathology they deal more with um Does something you have to whisper um, <laughs> so that department is always close to the mortuary because <laughs> oh. it deals a lot with um, let's say cancerous cells a child a woman has a 
a stillbirth, the baby has to be brought to the lab, we'll process it. A leg is amputated, it's brought to the lab, so we'll you process it. You dealt a lot with cadavers. <laughs> you know, not really cadavers. I was dealing with um, parts of the body, body, basically. Oh. Yeah. So at a point, we had someone's hand come in. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> so this is what... You left to yeah. get into the antitumoral journey. No, but somewhere yeah. along the line, I had to leave histopathology, right? Because okay. I did that for the internship. Although internship, I went through all the departments, but spent more time in my department. Then when I was in College of Medicine, I spent the entire one year in my department. Then I worked in a lab that specialized in my department. That's the third place. Then the first place I worked in University of Lagos Medical Center. They didn't have my department. Oh, okay. So that was like the breakthrough. <laughs> I don't know why I'm calling breakthrough. So which department were you now taking? I was mostly to? in chemistry. Oh, okay. Something I can relate with now. <laughs> so I have a brother who is a doctor. So he tells me horrific stories about cadavers and all those things. <laughs> but but let's, let's move forward. At what point did you discover that you had a thing for business okay let's start with that my father is a businessman oh okay what do i my entire uncles from both paternal and mother they were all into oh, so there's something that is in the family now you know amigo it's... what do you think oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's nice <laughs> so i think if you look at it 70 80 percent of evils should be business people yeah true like true. it's just our thing that's something i really admire about evils True. And while I was in the uni, I come from a very humble background, yeah. a very, very humble background. When things got so tough, at the point my parents couldn't continue giving me the kind of pocket money they used to give me, mm. things were a bit rough for me, I had to go back to business. So I would go to my father's store, I'll pick some goods because he was into menswear. Okay. Then I'll come to school, I'll go to banks. So I think that was when I stayed understanding that I don't have to do business the way every other person does it. True, true. So the first talk I took from my father's store, I realized, first of all, they're very expensive. So students could not afford that. I had to ask myself, how do you sell this stock? Mm -hmm. You know what I did? I went to the bank. The bank's around. Yeah. I'll meet one person. I just need to meet one guy in the bank. And I'm like, I have very nice wares and all that. So before I actually went to pick, I had to ask someone I know in the bank. The guy said, don't bring shirts. We're tired of shirts. Yeah. But what casual wear? So I actually had the mind of bringing only casual wear. So I come to the bank. I'm like, yeah, I brought those stuff. Oh. So you brought nice things. I said, yeah, okay. Don't worry. Come back after banking hours. I'll tell the security you're coming. So I come in around 6 p.m. Customers are gone. I showed them my stuff. The first stock, I sold out everything. Oh. The, the, the deal was I get to wait till the end of the month to get my money, which was fine. They didn't owe you. There was no... They can't owe me. Because oh. they don't want my drama. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was that was nice. That was a very great strategy. So I used that to survive in school. Oh. Till final year, I couldn't continue. Between doing my projects. True. And so for my course, we have to do our professional exams, which is different from school exams, which is different from your project. And most of, most of the time, our project is practicals. Mm. So I had to stop in final year. Like I couldn't continue. I stopped and I saw my... <laughs> and that was it that was me venturing into business yeah that was the starting point for yep. you yeah. so at what point did you venture into makeup have you always been a makeup person if at the point where i was looking for something to do i had access to makeup that would have been my go-to yeah. so i've always loved makeup i've always loved even back in uni uh, sorry secondary school when my father would give me some you know after secondary school, we're just at home waiting for admission. My father yeah. would always be like, do you have money on you? I'm like, no. He might give me like a thousand, two thousand. Guess where my money will go? Lipstick, eyeshadow, <laughs> eyeliner. That is what I always spend my money on. So I've always, always loved makeup. If I had the option of going, buying makeup to resell or buying menswear, I would have done makeup. But yeah, I true. didn't have that. So it was after school. It was after graduation that you ventured fully into makeup. Yep. Yeah. I saw something online. Stella makeovers. 
yeah. <laughs> Was that your beauty, your beauty yes. line at the time? That was how. That is the beginning of the makeup journey. Yeah. So anytime you see Stella makeovers, that was yes. how we started. Yeah. So you're like a professional makeup artist. Yes, I am. Did you go for trainings, or it's just yes. something that was? Oh, you did. Yes. So, Always wanted to learn how to do makeup. Or... That's the thing. So you know, back in those days, let's say like 2010, people don't take makeup artists. They serious, don't, right? So I'm a med lab scientist a certified licensed scientist and I go to tell my husband I want to learn makeup. Uh. <laughs> he wasn't getting it. Like he wasn't the, understanding. The side eye was like bombastic side eye. What's wrong <laughs> with her? Like what's exactly wrong with you? Then I always knew I liked makeup, right? Yeah. So I had a friend who the fiance was in Australia. He used to send her Avon products back then in school. Mm. God, that was where my pocket money finished. All the money I was hustling for. But because I couldn't sell, I was always trying to try new things. I loved it. So during the NYS, I already had my first son yeah. by the time I went for service. So coming, so I was posted to Bielsa, but because I had a baby, I was sent back to Lagos. I didn't do camp. So when we resumed this through Larry. As I walked in, the first thing I saw was a flyer where they were going to teach makeup. makeup. I'm like, finally, <laughs> finally. They cannot tell me because of men love, I cannot let right? makeup. Finally. I was so excited. Yeah. But I go home and I got the bombastic side eye again. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I was posted to College of Medicine. Okay. And the CDS, they gave me medical group. And I get there, they are just gisting. I'm like, what in no God's more. name am I supposed to no When I have option of learning no makeup, <laughs> what is this? Yeah. I did the first day, second day, I removed myself from that, they are good. <sighs> and I called the man that was handling the makeup. I was like, no, that's fine, that's fine. You can, you can come join us. Did you pay any fee for it or just free? No, so what he was doing was we were supposed to pay like, I think about five or six thousand from our allowance. Yeah. For the classes, yeah. There's always a subsidized rate, rate for coppers mm, at the time. Yeah. So that's how it started. That's like I left their medical group like, you left it. like with all my chest. <laughs> I was so excited. And my yeah. husband was like, he just looked at me like, okay, as long as it's not affecting your profession, it's okay. Yeah. So I had to do that once every week. You know, CDS once every yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. But that was the highlight of my week every week. So that's how Stella Makeovers came yep. came about. And then you had you had clients, you had gigs. You started doing makeups for people. Yeah. God, my friends and family suffered in my hands. Ah, that's always that's always the truth. The face face is oh always. Oh my God. Everybody keep your face and beating it. Oh, yeah. I was even beating yeah. nonsense, but you're going to keep your face for me. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I really noticed about the beauty, the beauty trends is that for every there's there's there are new trends coming out. And that means I hear people talk about I want to go for upgrade. Upgrade. I didn't I didn't know this about makeup. I just thought that once you learn there's a particular foundation or basics you have to learn and that's okay. I didn't know there's something called upgrade. So we keep evolving. Yeah. The industry is an industry that evolves and evolves very fast. And you just have to keep up. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, I'm gonna tell you about my own experience about there's something I want to talk about, but it I, I, it's too sudden. It's too sudden okay. right now. So now from Stella Makeovers to Nuban Beauty. The name Nuban Beauty, how did it come about? What was the inspiration <laughs> behind Nuban Beauty? I always like to tell the story of how Nuban Beauty came I'm about. I love to hear it. <laughs> and so I was a civil servant at that time. Yeah. I was working in University of Lagos and I was doing the Stella Makeovers. I had some products under the name Stella Makeovers that I was selling, mm. but I was selling on Conga and Jumia. Okay. So there is this exhibition, Makeup Fair, that happens in Lagos, right? So I always go to the exhibition in my head. I'm like, I must be a vendor here. Yeah, I miss if I will get boots here, you know? <laughs> like, it was something I really wanted to do because the mm -hmm. first time it came to, uh, the, the event came to Lagos was when I had my first son. That was about 11 years ago. So mm -hmm. I was there. You know how bad it was? My baby was up to three years. Uh, sorry, three months. He right? couldn't even carry his head well. I think he was about two months old. So my husband didn't understand. I carried this baby. I showed up with like you know everything makeup excites me so i come every year and every year i tap into it i must be a vendor here right yeah on this particular year i was already selling some products on the stellar makeovers and i'm like so i go to my friend's store 
And she's like, hmm, I'm his beating at the makeup. I'm like, ah, oh, you did not tell me. So, okay, let's share the table now. And then they can share the table. She said, yes. I said, okay, let's share the table. How much is it? She said, you're going to pay me, was it 15000 or 10000 I've already paid, so you balance me. Okay. There and there, I balanced her. I don't have plan. No. <laughs> this thing was happening in three weeks' time. I'm like, hey, God, what am I going to do? What am I going mm. to do? I only have a few very small products. And I remember I'm in a cooperative in the University of Lagos. And I go to ask them, like, how much um, am I eligible for? Loan? Yep. Okay. And they give me 500k. Yeah. And I bought, I was buying this, buying this, buying this, buying this. Ah, I will show them. Eh? I will show up at the fair. Yeah. <laughs> it was a one day fair. Yeah. At the end, I only saw 30,000 naira. Ah. <laughs> but that was that was quite an experience for you before because over the years you have gone to other you have gone to other uh, fairs. No. So uh -uh. right now at that same fair, we're yeah, <laughs> we are no G now. <laughs> like we are the leading when they come in, our name goes first before any other person's name. But that was a lesson for you at yes, the time. Yes, yes. It's funny, like it's one of the things I look back on, and I'm like, I just realized I'm a stubborn person. <laughs> Because that 30,000 naira yeah. was how Noban Beauty was born. Really? Yeah. So the name Noban, how? Okay, let me continue my story. Okay. And I get home, I cried. Mm. I cried. And my husband is looking at me with the bombastic side eye again. <laughs> Shabi, you will not rest. <laughs> Shabi, you will not rest. Yeah. You're a civil servant, something people dream to have. You have a good job with the government. Can't you just rest? And I'm crying my heart out like, goods of 500,000. What is a cook mm. soup? <laughs> what am I supposed <laughs> to do with that? I'm crying my heart out. And Gaima just left me and slept like, ah. <laughs> she will not hear my own. You're your own. No. I don't cry, finish, clean my eye. You know how when you're stressed like that, you can't sleep, right? True. I couldn't sleep. I just went on Facebook. I was just scrolling through Facebook and I saw this guy's post, Tribe Masi, you were the owner of Econet, mm -hmm. where he was talking about online being the next real estate. I'll never forget this. I will never forget this. And I'm like, hmm. So I continue reading. At that time, I think he has stopped it. He used to have these very elaborate posts mm -hmm. that are very detailed. He talks about stuff like good yeah. things like how he came into nigeria how he left nigeria the reason he left you know things yeah. that will ginger you like mm. and the funny thing is you comment he answers you so oh, wow that, yes but i think he has stopped it though and i keep reading i'm like okay online real estate online and the thing comes to me like but you're already online you're selling True. on conga you're selling True. on junior True. because what was making me cry the most was i have a day job right yeah i work saturdays and sundays when I say Saturdays, if I have duties, that means I come to work on Saturday and I leave on Sunday. Hmm. Right? What in God's name am I supposed to do with these goods? That's the reason I was crying. And I'm supposed to pay back this money. It's a loan. True. So the whole thing was, what do I do with this stuff? And I see the online being released. I'm like, okay, I'm already on Kong. I'm already on Junior. Okay. And he keeps saying that don't be on a borrowed land, be on your own space. That was yeah. what the post was about. Yeah. And I go like, oh, okay, I think it's time I have my own website, right? Yeah. In the middle of the night there, I type how to build websites in Nigeria. <laughs> and this particular website pops up. I think it was called Storefront at the time. I don't know if it still exists. I almost called them by 2 a.m. <laughs> like I was that excited like I almost called them by 2am yeah, very to, tenacious person I had to like give you the break I woke up yeah. by 7 like my husband was still looking at me to see if I'm still crying like I have a different drive in time like I have a direction we're going now and the thing was I was on my annual leave and annual leave is 6 weeks I think 6 weeks I think 4 6 weeks that was what it was okay. so I had a lot of time on my hands yeah. so I woke up the next day I'm dressing up he's looking at me what I thought you were on leave I'm like hmm I know where I'm going now. And I called them by seven and the guy is like, we're in Yaba, very close to my house. Mm. Maybe like 10, 15 minutes drive. I'm like, okay. 
I said, I want to open a website. He said, hey, we can talk. I said, no, <laughs> this is my 30,000. I need to see where the money is going. going to. <laughs> I drove myself to the office. Like, if the 30,000 miss, let me know where I'm going to come and do drama. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. I drove myself there and I'm like, I want to open a website. The guy goes, what's your name? I said, Stella Makeup. As he says, you know, I'll never forget. I can't remember his surname, but I remember his first name, Michael. Mm. And Michael says, no, I'm not registering Stella Makeup. As. You need to give me a unique name that people will remember. Mm. And he sends me away. He sent you away right there? With the 30,000. He says, go and think he of He didn't a collect it. He didn't try to say, let me just do it for you. Go and think of a unique That's a name. good guy. I can't remember the surname, but I won't forget the first name. And I know anytime I see him, I'll remember. You him. remember. He says, go home. Think about a unique name. When you find a unique name, come back. Hey. <laughs> do you see how people like that in Lagos? Like, that was really nice. He didn't take opportunity. He didn't. He refused to register Stella Mikovas. Wow. Wow. So I've noticed that all the stories that you've told me, you have had, you've had encounters. I would like to call them encounters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> encounters leading you yes. on the right path. Yes. From that, um, from that page on Facebook to this guy at Yaba, Michael. Yeah. Michael, wherever you are, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, at the time when the brand said making noise, he would always send me was I don't know. I think I lost my phone or something because I don't see him online anymore. He would always say, yes, yes, we did this. We did this. <laughs> he was this. there from the beginning. So yes, you understand. Yes. Oh, yes. that's how new band, new band, the name new band was. Yeah. I had out. to go home for two days. I kept thinking about it. Everything Niger was taken. Every domain Niger mm. has gone. And I wanted a name that when you hear, it speaks Africa. Yeah. Like, I wanted a name that on the sound of it says Africa. Nubian was taken. Yeah, Nubian. I, I, of course. Of was course. taken, right? So, and I see the Nubian number, the bank Nubian number. I'm like, okay, if I add beauty to the bank, has anybody taken it? Hold up, hold up, hold <laughs> up, hold up. Wait, wait. Nubian is the Nubian number. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we went from the Nubian because Nubian yeah. was taken and I removed the eye and I I saw it pop up as the num the number, the bank thing, and I'm like, hmm. If we put beauty in go you know, was, <laughs> that was, you know I never I never could I never could it wouldn't be my first guess <laughs> that Nubian is actually the bank number. That was smart. That yeah. was unique. So you went back to Michael. I, mean, I called him on the phone. I said, Michael, I have a name now. He said what? I said, no band beauty. He said, spell. I spelled to say, come in. Please, I need to put applause right now. <laughs> I need to put applause. <laughs> I love to hear stories like this. They motivate me. I'm trying to be a business person, kind of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they motivate me. And I'm very sure that along the way, I'll meet people who are actually interested in my case. Mm -hmm. God bless Michael. So that's how so Nubian nice. Beauty was born. Yeah. And then what happened to the rest of the products that you had? Guess what? I'm here to add this. Do you know how much it took to register it? 30,000 naira. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. God was really on your matter. <laughs> he led you along the way. That 30,000, that exact amount, it was cash. That's how I gave it to Michael as cash. The exact thing I got from the fair was what I just gave to him. And... You, you mentioned that you saw a post where you said um, online is the new real, real estate. estate. And I know, I read, I read your story that Nubian Beauty was online for two years. Yep. That was your real estate at that point. Yes. Still my real estate. Though. Still your real estate. Yes, because I've gone through your website. There's a very detailed way of how to order for products. Yep. And that is, that's the website that Michael... No, not the website, Michael. So it was funny. Um... At a point, the webs they were offering me, so it was like a, a very young business, that yeah. was the storefront, and they were giving me so many, you know, all these, um, don't worry, in one month time, you have a blog, don't worry, in and about six, seven months time, all the things they were promising me wasn't happening. People will place order. I can't get my money till I call my sister-in-law that works in InterSwitch. Oh. before my money will be released. If I didn't have my sister-in-law in, in InterSwitch, I didn't know how I was going to be getting my money. Yeah. So it became very frustrating. And the payment I made was for one year. So, but I'm, so this, my journey is a journey that, you know, when you're 
going on a journey, you're learning yourself. I just realized I'm the kind yeah. of person that I get up from my mistake first and as long as it did not kill me. <laughs> so I had a friend who joined me on that website, right? Yes. When they weren't giving me what I wanted, I thought I was leaving. She said, wait till the money finishes. I said, why? <laughs> she said, but we still have six months to go. I said, I'm not doing that with them. And I moved. And I called Michael. I said, I want to move my domain. She said, can, he asked me, can you? I said, as long as I can read on it and do it, mm. I can. He says, okay, I'll give you your IP. I'll give you your stuff. And he gives it to me and I switched it myself. Yourself? I handle my website. I can relate to this because there was one time I was trying to, I was into the whole writing um, thingy and I tried to open a website myself. For you to be able to handle, did you have any prior knowledge about handling nope. website? No. Nope. Did Michael, you know, like tell you what to do? At the point, I think I got stuck with something and he says, and I call him and he says, first of all, if my company catches me, they're going to fire me. One. Two, if you've dragged it to this place, I think you can figure it out. Yeah. That <laughs> okay. We've got to give you your flowers, man. <laughs> so I can call you but a, a beauty preneur and a tech not really tech woman. Digital I can the funny, you know how things come easy to different people? Yeah. It comes easy to me. Somehow I can figure it out. Okay, great. Yeah. I know someone else in my industry that was having issues with her website. I simply a competitor, I won't say names. And I know if she watches this, she's going to laugh. <laughs> and she calls me to say, ah, Stella, what do you do with your website? I say, I handle my website myself. I say, really? I said, yes. She says, my website guy is not picking my call again. <laughs> <laughs> and I have stuff to do on the website. Yeah. I said, okay, can I migrate you to where I host my website? She's like, okay. I asked her for some details. She said, hold on. She asked the guy. Yeah. The guy gives it to her. In less than an hour, I've moved her. She says, screaming. She called me, Stella, put it back, put it back. <laughs> Do you want to add a consultation fee to this part of it? <laughs> she says, I'm moving back. I'm like, what happened? She said, you actually did it, but moving back. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we're moving back because she's trying. So she needs to move everything from that yeah. platform. to the one I'm migrating her to. So we'll give it like three weeks. She was ready. She calls me again. And less than 30, min 30 minutes, like less than an hour, I move her to the next oh, one. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Um. So the the journey of Nuban Beauty, right, started twenty twenty fifteen. That was when the name the yeah. name started. And so for two years you have been online, mm -hmm. and right now you have stores across Nigeria. We have distributors too. We have two stores. I'm working on the third one, but we have more than a hundred distributors in Nigeria. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. And funny enough, I, I, I personally use Nube and Beauty, the concealer. I use the beauty blender. Nice. And um, I've not really tried the foundation yet. But the co concealer so far, full coverage, really nice. That's it's the, smooth. That's the best in the market. Yeah. I can say that with my full chest. So on your face, I'm, I'm hoping Everything. the camera. Everything is Nube and Beauty. I can't sell what I can't use. When I said you're, the, you're, the real, you're your real brand, <laughs> I meant every word of it. I, I meant every word I of it. I can't sell what I can use. So everything on my face is Nuban, or maybe some things that are yet to come out. Oh, uh -huh. okay. I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. So the latest product, is it on your face too? The blush. Yep. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. So six years now. How has... That's, is it six? Six years. Total 2015. Six, seven years. I'm counting. <laughs> 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. It's seven years going. Eight. Seven years and going. Apologies for that. <laughs> but how has it been? The journey so far, seven years, eight years. How has it been? Hmm. Thank God. No. Summary of it all. Summary of it all. It's. it's hmm. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> that, that carries volume. That carries we've been, volume. We've been through it all. Yeah, good. because I can't imagine what how the beauty industry is. There's a lot of competition, a lot of competition, a lot of grounds to cover. When we came in for brands in Nigeria, you're just very few right now. There are a lot every day. I see a new name. Mm. 
and I'm excited. Honestly, anyone that knows me in the industry knows I ask tell anything she will tell you, mm. right? Why? Nigeria has a population of over 200 million people. Right? Yeah. Before people like us came in, what were they using? Right? We have a population of 220 million on the last count. Yeah. We've not even scratched the surface. Hmm. There are other br international brands that we are sitting here comfortably. Why can't we do that ourselves? Hmm. So I'm all for us. Right now, I know that there's in Africa, Nigeria is leading when it comes to beauty. We are like, I know, I know, I know products. I know companies that have left Nigeria. We are taking up our spaces and we are owning it. We are young. We don't have as much uh, leverage as they do. Yeah. Let's talk about not having access to funding. Mm. It's, I will tell you, nobody's funding Nuban Beauty. It's all our sweat. Like, we're wow. doing it all alone. If we're in a country that is not Nigeria, <laughs> <laughs> or let's say not even Africa, I know the kind of funds we'll have access to. Yeah. We don't. Not even one. We don't. At the time, I think the only loan my company has ever taken was from GT Bank. So you don't had investors come to nope. you and tell you, we want to plunge it and money in here. Nope. And nope. And I'm not looking though. Okay, so let me paraphrase the question. <laughs> you don't have investors coming in at all because you don't want them. No, we've not had anyone walk up to us yet. Are they scared of you? What I is think the it, problem? It's not of us. I think it's a Nigeria thing. <laughs> I think it's a Nigeria thing, right? Yeah. It's not scared of us as a company. Mm -hmm. But I also know that I think some have their eyes on us. Maybe they are waiting for something. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're ready? I don't know. <laughs> That's a great answer. I honestly That's a great know. answer. I honestly Because we know. actually do not know what is ahead of us. But yeah. we always get prepared for it. Yeah. So in terms of innovation and how the world is right now, the world is digital, it's going fast-paced. What would you say Nuban Beauty is about in terms of innovations? I, I, I love this question. You know why? When I was struggling to build my website, no other beauty brand in Nigeria had a functional website, right? Hmm. I gave that website everything I had. Remember, that was the reason Nuban Beauty was born. Yes, yes. I gave it everything I had, like everything. I'm awake at night trying to figure out how everything will work fine, right? And you know, I have customers that will tell you, I don't want to pull my card because you pull my yeah. scan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's so always I'm a problem. So I'm doing all this work and Nigerians are so skeptical about putting in their card. So it was a problem for me. At the point, like at the beginning of the business, we had to like do pay on delivery to get people to trust us enough mm. to buy from us, right? And COVID happened. Always. That year. That was our best year. Okay. I didn't see that twist coming. Really? Yo. 2020? I tell you. How? T t tell us more, please. The website was ready. Okay. People were home. Ask any online vendor. That was when people were buying like crazy. Yeah, because they had no choice. They couldn't move. So they just had to trust you. They were ordering stuff online by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'm a med lab scientist, so when COVID happened, I think the day the Italian guy came into Nigeria, that they yeah. were I was in the airport. I was on my way to Kano, I think. Because from my medical background, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, at the moment the Italian guy thing happened, I said reading up on what we are to expect. And I come back from Kano and I come to work that day. One of my staff walking and this, I'm like, okay, how did you come to work today? And she said, eh, then I entered a uh, bus. Then I entered, okay. I think this was on a Wednesday. And I tell them, I will be paying, I'll be paying salary. I think that was like two weeks into the, into the month. Okay. And after that Wednesday, it kept bugging me on Thursday. I tell them, I'll be paying salary tomorrow i want everyone to stock their house 
And they're like, hey, Ma, what are you saying? I say, I am telling you, go stock your house. And I pay salary. The next day, I tell them, nobody comes to work on Monday. We started the lockdown before government announced it. I have children. I can't afford that. Yeah, you that. can't afford to take that risk. So we go home for one week. Nothing was happening. I was bored out of my head. Then I was hearing... My phone kept ringing. I want to buy lipstick. I want to buy foundation. I want to buy concealer. In my head, I'm like, okay. After that one week, you know, they give that in the mornings, you, they're allowed to go out. You know, okay. there was this time yeah. thing happening. Yeah. The next week on Monday, I drive my car to the office. I load the car with products. I come back home. Every day, I had like three dispatch in front of my house. Like people were ordering. That's, that that <laughs> <laughs> I actually did not know that COVID was COVID was a great opportunity for some businesses. It was. Because you're actually not the first person talking about how COVID really expanded your your business. That was really great. And fact for the fact that you saw an opportunity in that, you you foresaw what was going to happen, you foresaw the lockdown. You reached out to your your staff, told them to, you know, buckle up, this is going to happen. That was quite insightful. That was very insightful. So uh, we're going to go on a very short break and then we we'll take some breaks. And then by the time we come back, we'll go deeper into stuff because I have a lot of questions that I really want to know about the makeup world. Okay. So so far, I hope you're really enjoying yourself. I am. Now. I am. I am okay. And so right now, we'll go on a short break. And when we come back, more conversation follows. Tales from Africa aren't just stories. They are living pieces of history passed down from one generation to another, celebrating the true spirit of Africa. Join us on a journey into Africa, the motherland, the cradle of civilization. Alo by Sabi Writers takes you to the heart of African narrative. It is an online marketplace to find, shop, and enjoy your favorite African stories. Suspense. Why is mother's phone not going through? Betrayal. But you said you loved me. Tragedy. <laughs> Vengeance. His grandmother will pay for this. Mystery. <laughs> and romance. I will always love you, Ritzi. All available on Alo by Sabi Writers for 1,000 Naira only. Visit alo.sabiwriters.com today to experience storytelling like never before. <laughs> Back, this has been the Build Up Story, a podcast powered by Sabi Writers Studios. We've had in the house our guest, Mrs. Stella Ndekile, the founder and CEO of New Ben Beauty, a Nigerian beauty brand that you know caters for all skin brands and skin King types in Africa. And so far, she has you know drilled me through her story, and I really love it. And one of the things I really admire about her is her tenacity. Her, her willpower. She has a very strong will to make sure things work out the way she wants it. And it has been quite an interesting time with you, ma'am. Thank you. I have a lot to learn about you. A lot to learn from you as well. And one of the things I've learned is that when you're faced with difficulties, you don't stay there. Nope. You look for a solution. That's, that is one of the... I love that. I love that about you, ma'am. So for eight years in the industry, what has been your values and principles that has held you on through this journey because i'm very sure that you have you have encountered a lot of compromise in the industry but you haven't bent at least not for one bit i use your product so i can relate to it your product is top notch it's excellent i've not had any 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 um any complaint of skin rash or skin reactions you can't. You can't. it's all it's all good and it's beautiful so okay. what would you say has held you on this path I'm a very religious person. I'm a Catholic. Mm. You know when we say Catholic, most people don't think Catholics are str uh, religious like that. Yeah, but I am. Most of the things I do or where I find myself are usually out of directions given to me by God. Yeah. So before I resigned... It was as if I was stuck between the deep blue sea mm. and the devil itself. Yes. You know, when 
my parents trained me through school to read med lab science. And I wake up and tell them, I'm not doing it again. Mm. It was one of the scariest times for me. Mm. And that was where the God part came in. So I got the work in the University of Lagos. I didn't know nobody. Or oh, more than 100 applicants, I was the only one that was taken. Wow. I didn't know nobody. In fact, it was after like two months of working that someone walked up to me and said, do you know you took someone's position? I said, who? He said, the job was created for someone that was already in the system. Hmm. But at the point of decision, nobody was there to speak for him. I didn't know. So my journey, my entire journey has always been like, it's a plan from yes. God. Yes. So while there, I became very unsatisfied because I wasn't given the level I was supposed to come in and I was told to come in, don't worry, we'll fix it, mm. right? And I became very uncomfortable. At, time, at, at a point, I even got depressed. I lost so much weight. I don't want nobody to see that picture, though it's on Facebook, but <laughs> if you see the pictures of me there, oh yeah. God, it was horrible. First of all, I don't like to eat. I have a love-hate relationship with food. With food. And at that point, I could go three days, I won't eat anything. I won't even feel as if I didn't eat anything. It was that bad. Mm. So I kept going back to God to say, you gave me this job. <laughs> Fix this position thing. It was as if it was silent. I will go during my breaks. I will go to the chapel in the university. I will sit down, I will cry. I'm tired. Fix this. It was as if it was quiet. And I just realized with God, when you keep screaming at him, <laughs> you have to be quiet to hear yeah, him speak. Very true. So I think because I was so angry, I was doing more of screaming, right? So one day I cried and I slept off. I think, okay, I was on call. So I was supposed to go home. You know, when you're on call, you yeah. end, your duty ends the next day in the morning. So you go home to come back the next day. So I just finished my call. As I was driving off, I just entered the chapel. I sat down, I cried again, and I dozed off. When I woke up, I heard, make yourself happy. Just that. And makeup is my happy place. Oh, my God. So, when he said, make yourself happy, the first thing that came to me was makeup. makeup. So, and I go to makeup, and he did his thing. In six months... I made three times my annual salary. Annual salary, I made three times that. In six months. In six months. And I go, I hear you, Lord, I hear you. <laughs> it was in one of your episodes, um, Walk With Me. Yeah. I follow it up. Oh, lot. you do? I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I do. And you said something that really stuck with me because I feel like we both have the same journey. Mm -hmm. I was working in a federal government. Fascinating. They don't know that. <laughs> They don't know that I was working in a federal government um, job and I resigned because I heard God told me to move and I moved. I didn't look back and everyone around me thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. It was coming to Lagos that I realized that, okay, that moving was indeed in God's plan. Mm -hmm. One of the things you said in Walk Me, one of the episodes was, you said God doesn't call, call the, the qualified. qualified. He qualifies, qualifies the, the called. called. Yeah. So would you say that your journey has been that kind in that path. If you know what is ahead, you can say, I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> and they also say that if your dream doesn't scare you, then you haven't even started. It doesn't scare me anymore. Because you have dwelt in it. And I understand that behind his obedience is where everything I want is. Yeah. Yeah. So the normal thing, the, the human thing to do is to be scared. Mm-hmm. But you need to step out with it. Like, Deep. I've done that over and over and over again. That for every time I do that, what happens after shocks me. Mm. So I'm actually looking forward for these things because I know that it's difficult, yeah. But I know mm. that what happens after is usually amazing. Yeah. So my journey is a journey. Like that's why actually is a walk with God, basically. The work we you're talking about was an instruction. Hmm. Yeah. And so far, it has blessed people's lives. I've seen the engagement on Instagram. It's funny how most of them in the group will not want to talk. But the, the, the feedback I get in my own personal DM is yeah. amazing. 
it's a mandate. You know at the point I stopped the work. Yes, Stella? yes, I, I noticed. In fact, it was one of the canes that was flogged small. <laughs> He said, I wasn't, he said, it wasn't for you. Yeah. You know, the funny thing with, now I'm going to digress from Ugon Beauty. You yeah, made it's me okay. Go, it's okay. We'll spiritual. still come back, but it's okay. <laughs> the thing about gifts is they're not given to you for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The cow doesn't produce milk for itself, does it? A word. We're going to put that somewhere in, on the screen, yes? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do that. Yeah. It's not for you. And let me tell you what scares me the most. Your gift is meant for someone, mm. right? What happens to that person if you don't take up your call? Hmm. Okay. Okay. If you follow what we said, I did a particular episode on this mm. where I said the founder of that fair, remember the fair? Yeah, the fair you went. If she didn't do that, I don't know if there will be an urban beauty today. You won't even have realized that this is actually doable. So what happens if you're not answering your okay. call? Yeah. How many lives are tied to you obeying your call? Great. Great. So, um, words on marble, okay? Your gifts are not for you. No. They're not for you. Mm-hmm. They're for people out there yeah. who are waiting, waiting for you to move, who are waiting for you to do something about it. That was deep. That's deep now. So going going back into the bad beauty. (laughs) (laughs) Because we want to do it here, we're not going to move. (laughs) It's okay. Uh, It's okay. Uh, going back to Nuban Beauty. You you are very um African infused beauty brand. Mm -hmm. And I see it in the way you name your products. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask, who comes up with this name? Me. We've got Ada, we've got Fumi, we've got Sorosoki. I, I saw that when I was like, okay, what's going you on? Let's talk about the concealer names. You see what I did with yeah. the codes? 042, 043. Yeah. You know, because I schooled in uh, Eboi, Enugu yeah. has the code. So when we were going back, if you want to go from Eboi to Enugu, you go going into 042. Oh. Yes. So those codes are actually Nigerian codes. I see what you did there. Because yeah. I use 044. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. So, so that's how the names came up. Yeah. So what inspired the whole eyeshadow palette, Ada, Fumi? So it's one of the things I really, when I said I wanted to have an African brand, I wanted something that speaks Africa. Yeah. Like I wanted something that, yes, yeah, some of our products have English names though, because yeah. we don't want to yeah, okay. be able to bite their tongue all the time, right? <laughs> yeah. We have products that have um, English names, but... I'm so particular with the Africa because this is us. True. I am a proud Nigerian. Mm-hmm. So I need, so we get questions like, oh, nobody is a Nigerian brand. I didn't know that till last year. Really? I, I, nice. I, I didn't know that till since last year, last year. So, yes, we, the, the benchmark is international. True. But I want them to also realize this is Africa. And you're doing that. You're Thank doing you. such a good job with Nuban Beauty. Well done, ma'am. Thank so you. So let's talk about your your new product, the lip blush. I didn't know that blush is a thing. Like it's, I didn't know it's a thing in makeup. I just thought it was something that you just apply maybe when you want to go. I see it in movies a lot, but with the white people, yeah. But I didn't know that. Is this year? If I'm going to be very honest, is this year that I knew that okay, blush is actually a thing in makeup. And I saw different colors and shades of it. So let's talk about your products. The, the recent lip blush. Um, how has it been? Uh, what processes? How how long did it take for it to come out in the market? It's been there for a while, though. That product took more than a year. But it just got launched in April. That's the thing most people don't see. You know how long around it takes? Oh. That's the thing most people don't see. So the thing with Nuban Beauty is that I am... We are so intentional about our products, right? And that's why we don't cough off products as fast as so many other people. Every product has what it is meant to do. If it's Mm. not doing that, I'm not pushing it out. So you're saying that this blush has been... It's been in the works for a while. 
for a while. If anybody who comes to my office would have seen the bottle sitting there for more than seven months. So you didn't push it out? No, so because it's a process. It needs yeah. to do what I want it to do. If it's not doing it, I'm not pushing it out. I'm yet to get that. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yet to get that. So, so far, how has it been? How's the reception been? Nice. Nice. Orders are coming back. Of course. Because oh, okay. it has an amazing quality and a little goes a very long way, which was what we were aiming for. Mm -hmm. First of all, we needed it to be the same consistency with the concealer. Yeah. Because the issue we had with a lot of blenders, uh, a lot of blushes in the market right now is if I place it and I move my hand too much, it lifts my makeup. Mm. Or it's too oily. Or it's too dry. So it needed it to work well with products. So if you notice when we launch, we're showing you, you use it on the foundation mm. and you can use it on top of a fully made up face, face. and it's fine. Yeah. So it has to do what it has to do before me to, for me to push out a particular product. You're a very detailed person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, it's, it's, it's good. I mean, come on. I've seen, I've seen, I see it in the works of Nibban Beauty. Yeah. You are really detailed. Okay. So, um... It's like grace a little bit. Okay. So I saw some really interesting pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting you to know that Mrs. Stella and Dekili is a boy mob. Yes. Uh, I've always wanted to ask, how are you doing it? How do you do it? You, you don't a, really want to know. <laughs> a boy mom, four beautiful, handsome boys. Yeah. How do you do it? Uh, how do you do it? Look at them. Wow, how old is the eldest? He's uh, 11. 11, yes. Yeah. How, how so? My, my question exactly is, how do you navigate being a mother then to be a CEO? How do you navigate? Because I, that, that, that world is quite intertwined and you've handled it for a number of 11 years. How do you do it? I'm blessed, right? I have the best support system ever. My husband will give me all the bombastic side eye, but he is the most supportive partner ever. Isn't that what we're all praying for? Like, ever. Yeah. When my parents were screaming at me for wanting to leave my day job, this man made it the point of every morning he wakes up, he asks me, when are you resigning again? Hmm. Every day. And the last time my father called to scream, I told him, see, eh? My husband says I can resign, so stop screaming at me. <laughs> and he calmed down. <laughs> he calms down. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's about our parents and uh, our husbands. You know, I, I recently got married. Yeah. And there's something my mom was saying the other time. And I told her my husband likes it. She was like, oh, sorry. Sorry. You get it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, power yeah. strange town or yes, something. Yes, yes. Because I had to stay the fact that. My husband is fine with it. In fact, he can't even wait for me to leave the job yeah. because I turned the shadow of myself. It wasn't the woman he married anymore. So mm. he kept saying, and when he saw me being happy doing makeup, he was even the one that planted the seed of resignation in my heart. Don't, uh -uh. It's not time to go. Uh -uh. Is this still what it like this? Wow. <laughs> I'd like to give an applause to him. He's, Please he's, do. He's, he has really, you know... Down the path. <laughs> so I'll, um, there's this. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at this glow up. So, um, what year was this? Do you, do you remember? Um, this should be two years ago. Two years ago. Now let's take it back to the other throwback picture, the real throwback picture, <laughs> the one I saw. The one yeah. I saw this. All I said was, okay, this is growth. This <laughs> is growth. <laughs> what year was this, man? This should be 2011. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was the occasion? Do you remember what happened yes, to you? Yes, we went for his childhood friend's wedding. Wow. This is 2011. That was before we even got engaged. Oh. <laughs> Any lessons? Any life lessons? <laughs> <laughs> Any life lessons for newly married people? You have been in this industry or, should I say, ministry <laughs> for 11 years. Any life lessons for newly married people and, you know, single people? as well <laughs> three four years is the most horrible one. Oh, patience should be the key word patience yes 
patient. I'm realizing that you all come from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Try not to push your belief on each other. Mm -hmm. Learn when to pull back. Mm -hmm. Pick your fight. Mm -hmm. That's the key one for me. Pick your fight. Pick your fight. It's not everything you should follow up yep. on. Pick your fight. Know when to let it go. <laughs> <laughs> because we may can't pick on things, Sha. <laughs> I, I, that, that one is for me. <laughs> that, that one is for me. Everything shouldn't be a fight. Yeah. If it's not going to harm anybody, if it's not going to let it go. Let it go. Yeah, it's been such a great time with you, Bell. It's you. been such a great time with you. What would you like to tell your 10-year-old self? Hmm. Before I say what I want to say, so my father calls me Ginika the Power when I was a baby, mm. right? He doesn't do that anymore, though. When I was still a child, he calls me, my Igbo name is Ginika. But he calls me Ginika the Power. What does Ginika mean? The full name is Ginika Chuku. Who is greater than God? Deep. Deep. So he used to call me Ginika the Power. And growing up, he actually stopped. So my aunts and uncles still does. At a point, I didn't understand what the name meant. What I'll say to my 10-year-old self is this. Ginika, you're still the power. Oh. You will always be the power. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. That, that Ginika, the power, that's a really nice name. My aunt still called me that. Like, I saw her two weeks ago. The first <laughs> thing she really did nice. it was. And all these childhood names cannot be forgotten. It's really but nice. But guess what? My father said that he doesn't call doesn't me that. He doesn't call me that. I saw my aunt two weeks ago. I went for a burial. And she screams, Get the kind of power. I like, like it. <laughs> I really like it. He has this whole morale and you, you know, know? street vibes and everything. Yeah, my father stopped really calling nice. me that. So I'll tell my 10-year-old so Don't forget that name. Don't forget it, ma'am. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. You're the power and you'll always have that power. You're the power. Really, you are. Your advice to young, aspiring female entrepreneurs. I will start by advising single ones. Please do not get hooked with someone who doesn't support your dreams. Mm. Don't. No matter how lovey dovey looks, you can only create from a peaceful place. Yeah. Yeah. You True. can only create from a peaceful place. No matter how warm and butterfly, amount of butterflies in your tummy right now. <laughs> If he is not pushing for your growth, mm. if your growth intimidates him, move. Move. I am here today because my husband is solidly behind me. Mm. I can I only I can't imagine if he wouldn't let me fly. How would your life be? I can't like I honestly can't <laughs> imagine it. Because there was never a time where it was a thing. He wanted the best for me at every point. He never said you're shining too much. Nope. He never said you're doing too much. I'm going to say this on camera. I know he's not going to, he's going to be shocked, I remember. So when I got married, before I got married to him, he had a friend whose fiance was doing so well. She was doing amazingly well. So it, it always excites him. Yeah. And I come from a background, come I grew up in the East, where I know that the woman has to take a back seat, mm. right? So it was weird to me. I'm like, and I asked him, that was before we got my asked him, I said, would you want me to be? And he said, why not? Mm. I'm like, so you're okay if I make more money for you? He said, why not? Why would I stop you? Do you know, I never, this was before he, we got engaged, before we got married. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this one is Bobo in Misha. <laughs> you never could believe what you were hearing. And this is 13 years of knowing him. It hasn't changed. Wow. He's still... The first thing. job, the internship job I got in National Orthopedic Hospital, he got it for me. After spending a month in Lagos looking for where to do internship, I left Lagos. I went back home. He took my CV, said going himself to submit it. Hmm. He's a treasure, ma'am. He is. Do you, have any love, love, <laughs> do you have any love thing you want to tell him right now? Like a love shout out? Of oh, course. Please, please. I'd love course. to hear it. We're here for you, man. <laughs> of course. Like, 
11 years of marriage, 10 yeah. to 30 years of knowing him, we still call ourselves honey. Like, and he's still sweet. And he's still honey. He is. Wow. I can't remember ever saying his name. I only call his name. His name, name, name. His government name. His government name. <laughs> name. When maybe I'm speaking to his brother or his sister. Because I can't say honey. So yeah, like, you can't. And it's funny that my parents say, when they want to address him, they'll say honey gay. When my sisters want to talk to themselves or me about it, they say, they'll say honey gay nika. So nobody oh, calls his nobody name. <laughs> nobody does. Honey is now the new name. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like, and it's been honey all the way. We've, yeah, two people from different backgrounds, you have some bending and shifting till you mm. adjust. Because basically it's, there's this movement that will have to happen. You understand each other's boundaries. You understand each other's ticks. What makes mm. this one tick? It had happened and we're in a very amazing place where before he says something, they know what he wants to say. Before I say yeah, he you guys knows, have bonded. It's he's the best thing that happened to me and Nuban Beauty. I will tell you something. The first eyeshadow palette we had, we had someone copy it. And the person went about telling everybody that wants to hear it's exactly like Nuban Beauty. Because the eyeshadow was doing amazingly well. That shit was huge. Like, it was my breakthrough, honestly. And this person goes to do exact same thing and he's telling everybody, it's exactly, in fact, you see in the comment section, it's exactly like Nibam Beauty. I got, so I'm, I get angry very easily. I also let it go very easily too. I got so pissed. I come back home, I tell my husband, can you imagine? I'm pulling this product out of the market. Like, she thinks she can shine off me. What the, 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 the. I was just looking at me. When he was done, he said, you will keep selling it. I'm like, but she's using my name. Is she saying my name? He said, you will keep selling it. And that's what happened. He said, this product will give you the money you will need to grow. You will keep selling it. My sister, I sold more than 10,000 of that. What? Yep. I left that product on my own terms. <laughs> Incredible. Talk about progressive men. Talk about supporting husbands. Talk about yeah. talk about great dads, great husbands. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that's that that's really great to hear. It's great to hear that you um, finding what makes you happy, finding what makes you tick, and still, you know, making waves in the home front. Yeah, it shows the balance through it all. Balance on all sides. In the textbook, we we'll say balance. Yeah, yeah. But real life. It's, <laughs> it's basically prioritizing things. Things that are very all. important to you. It's prioritizing things. Sometimes I miss my kids' birthday. I miss some important dates, mm. you know. But you always make up for it. It's just saying which takes the... Yeah. Which is the highest thing and which are we taking to the back? Yeah. What matters, what doesn't matter, you know? Mm -hmm. And my kids know that when mommy shows up, you would see me, I'm that parent running on the tracks. When my kids are in, uh, participating in the house sports, like, <laughs> because I'm a very competitive person, right? Yeah. So my son, my second son was doing a 100 meter race. And we were practicing at home. He was just four. Four years old? Yeah, I'll tell him, stand there. Well, let's go. Pa, he would take off. A four year old. His classmate didn't understand what was the 100 meter race. They didn't know what it was. You know, he had a coach at home. <laughs> So when it was the house was the day we were in stadium, Teslin Balogun, that was where the yeah. school used. I think was it Teslin or I think you know we're inside University of Lagos, we were using the stadium, okay. the track race. Yeah. And the children were standing. I just got up. Everybody was looking at me. I went to the finish line. I sat down. I didn't say anything again. And they say, as they shot, bah, my son took off. The rest of the four year olds didn't know what was happening. <laughs> He had been trained. The guy took off. And he knew I'm heading for where mommy is. Yeah. Immediately he got to me, he stopped. <laughs> Everybody was screaming. The rest, it was when he took off that the rest now understood what they were supposed to do. <laughs> oh my so God. I'm that, I'm that mom that, because I'm very competitive. Yeah. I am always, they're doing it at house sports. I'm that mom that when they separate, she'll come out. I'm standing there like, I'm going to run. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh wow okay oh that's really great to hear that's really that, i'm sure people were really okay what's going on you know when i got <laughs> off the, the second time he ran so i didn't get to the i didn't get to come down so he became he was the star for the for his uh house yeah the second time i'm like okay you're a big boy now you know the drill i didn't come down to stand at the finish line guy passed finish line kept going He was plus, looking for more. Plus, in the house, plus master, <laughs> plus everybody kept chasing him. I said, it's okay. You know how big he kept going. It's okay. Stop. Because there was no mommy to say stop. <laughs> okay. okay. That really cracked me up. That really cracked me up. We're going to be rounding up this session very soon. And I kept the best for the last two things. Okay. You got an award. Um, Nubang got an award. Oh, as a, yes. <laughs> as yes. a beauty brand of the year by Hakonomi. Yeah. How did that make you feel? I didn't see that coming. Mm. So it kind of still makes me embarrassed. In a good way. No. Like, people had speeches to say when they win. I didn't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're mesmerized. You know what? When we were announcing it, I was pressing my phone. Uh -uh. They didn't even give you a heads up at all. Nothing. No I email, know, no nothing. So I know we are nominated, right? But in yeah. my head, I'm like, what? I've been nominated uh -huh. several times. Like, I've been nominated more than 20 times. So, yeah. it's one of those things. And it's not as if they're sharing money. So. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think that it would be you at all. So, I was actually editing a video on my phone. And they announced this category. <laughs> We saw the code name I didn't know. I noticed my husband was staring at me. And I looked at him. He was staring at me and smiling. I said, honey, what is it? He was, he had this full smile on his uh, face. Uh, I'm like, did we win? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, oh. I'm like, are you sure? Did you hear it well? And I heard them scream, is nobody here for Nuban Beauty? I'm like, oh, seriously, we won? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I didn't see that. I didn't expect that reaction. So, like, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting anything. So it still makes mm. me embarrassed. I was the only Company that wants something that didn't have a thank you speech. <laughs> well, it's okay. We all understand that it was, it was a moment of excitement. But it was. I did. I go home. I didn't post it. I kept the award where I could see it. I would sleep out. Look at it. <laughs> you couldn't. You couldn't believe your eyes. Okay, this so is real. So we actually won something. Yeah. Yeah. Like. It Congratulations, was... ma'am. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Nibbon Beauty is about to hit more and more awards. Amen. Amen. Yes. So last, the last, the last win for you. Congratulations, ma'am, on your latest book. Yes. <laughs> yeah, when, when I heard about it, I was really, 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 really happy about it. And it contains a whole life lessons about your journey. Mm -hmm. you, and that's something you want to share with other people. You don't hold back. You no, want I to don't. help other people. It's my mandate. I like it. I like it for you, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm, like I said before, I'm a very spiritual person. Yeah. Although on seeing me, you won't believe that because I always look glammed up and all that. I almost stopped writing. Mm. Yeah. You know, so almost killed me. Like at the point I stopped, <laughs> I didn't want to continue. And the Lord was on my case. Mm. It wouldn't let me. It says your book is a manual you must finish it it keeps going it's a manual you must finish it but every time i sit down to pray the book comes out every time yeah. i sit down to pray the book comes I out, i'm like okay, okay okay i have to go finish it yeah <laughs> i have to go and the moment the first copy came out the burden left mm. that's how it always it releases you once you've obeyed it left me How do you feel? I don't know, honestly. <laughs> I don't know. Because this is a new terrain for me. Yeah. And like I said before, I know that behind, for everything I'm asking for, yeah. is behind my obedience. Yeah. I'm just obeying. Oh, it has been such a great time with you, ma'am. I really It's enjoyed so many, pleasure. so many notes of wisdom, so many notes of great things I have learned in this journey. I've also learned that, um, Just obey. Yeah. Just obey. If you're a spiritual person, just obey. And every other thing will be added onto yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, ma'am. It's a pleasure. I really, It's I really a pleasure. enjoyed. I actually enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed today's session. And we have come to the end of today's 
episode on the Builder story. We've had the honor of having the CEO and founder of Nuban Beauty, Mrs. Stella Ndekile. And she has, you know, shared a lot of nuggets, a lot of wisdom. And she is a very beautiful woman. And one of the things I would like to leave with you is always obey. When you have that nudging within you, obey. And everything will come. It has been a great time. My name is Ekom Akpabio Joseph. I hope to see you in the next episode. This has been Build a Story, powered by Sabi Writers Studio. See you next time.